right? We are we are going to get super crunk today. I'm I'm pumped up for this class. I think it's going to help a lot of us, especially with where the the market is and where everything's happening right now. So uh, I'll just uh, give it one more minute here. But uh, so my name is Brendan Bardick with the Bardick Group at Keller Williams Real Estate. Um, I've helped you know somewhere close to over you know well I don't know how many exactly, but thousands of agents uh, improve their real estate careers. And with myself and my business partner, Anna McKeel, we were uh, tasked from Keller Williams University to develop some timely content that, uh, and training that would help agents uh, that are working in today's market, right? We know we have the classics out there. We got Quantum Leap. We've got all these you know, awesome courses out there. But uh, this is more for what's happening right now, finger on the pulse, and what we can get to, uh, to really help agents in this current market. So, so we're going to be talking about some of the things that agents don't really care too much about, right? Uh, unfortunately, like uh, profit, uh, that, that seems to be a word that escapes us. Uh, I know today if I would have had a class on how to sell 50 homes a year with Facebook, there'd be 500 people here. So first of all, applaud yourself, you know, give yourself some credit for attending this session. This is where the true business players live. And this is for people that want to work smarter, not harder, right? That, that's at the end of the day, what, what we're wanting to accomplish here and make sure that um, we're maximizing every dollar. So as a few more people jump on, uh, this isn't a budget class. Uh, I know that word budget is something that, you know, we're just like budget, <laughs> right? Like that's not for me. You're not going to tell me how to spend my money, right? Um, so we're not, we're not going to talk about budget today. This is a um, technique and a strategy to make sure that we're maximizing profit with a very simple and fun acronym and a... Um, weekly, monthly, and annual strategy to make sure that we are um, constantly improving our profit margin, okay? So we're gonna get into all that. So let's jump in. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to put those in the chat box. You, you can also come off of mute. I, I love the interaction um, and we'll make this as fun as we possibly can. All right, so everyone can see the screen, hopefully. That's always gotta check with that, excellent. All right, so let's talk about profit, right? So we don't talk about it because a number of reasons. Uh, people don't know how, right? You get into real estate and they're like, hey, you need to you know, sell houses, do this, do that. It's very rare that you see most people having profit courses or a profit piece, even in the first few weeks of you joining a brokerage. I never had one right? There was tons of classes on like how to do an inspection objection, how to write a contract. We are independent small businesses. I mean, we are entrepreneurs. So it's, it's one of these things that if you don't reach out for this information, unfortunately, it wasn't there, right? And then, uh, of course, it's a chore, right? Oh, I got to look at my numbers and uh, do I have to get QuickBooks? You don't need QuickBooks. You don't need an accountant. You don't need a bookkeeper until you get to a large enough size that that's going to become a requirement. What you need is a simple, easy to use strategy that you can, you can do consistently that's not going to drive you nuts, right? Uh, the other problem that we see is it's not calendared, right? You, you don't have it on your schedule. Uh, and then we just know in general, 75% of all business owners neglect and fail to plan their finances. They, they go and do all this work and then they don't really care about you know, could we do this strategy? Could we save here? Could we maximize this? And then the biggest one that I've found, right, is you don't get an award for profit, right? Every single brokerage, your award structure is set up on volume and units, right? Sell, 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 sell until your little heart explodes. Why? Because your brokerage makes money when you sell more units, right? That's just a fact, right? They, they don't care if you're making, if you make any money, they know that they're going to make money. And that's, you know, a big piece of, of this program. So, so we want to focus on thinking about every month, what would you do if you did get an award for having the highest profit margin, 
what would that look like, right? So one of the scariest statistics, and I was talking to some amazing agents this morning about this, is 87% of all real estate agents fail in the first five years because of cash. And I find it funny, right, when we're like, oh, 50% fail in their first year. And you always hear agents, it was like, so why didn't real estate work out for you? And they're like, you know, it just wasn't a good fit for me. No, you ran out of cash, right? That, that's what happened. You, you ran out of money and now you have to work at Walmart, right? That's, that's what happened. You didn't have a good business structure. Now you're picking up shopping carts, right? That's what I don't want to have happen here is I want to make sure we can fundamentally make, make it very clear that we need to sell houses. Absolutely. We need to sell volume, but there's so many techniques we can be doing to maximize every dollar. So this never happens to one of you. Okay. Uh, so the big piece of this, right. And even if you, let's say that you made it past the five years, right. You made it past the five years. First of all, if you, if you're over five years in the business already, give yourself a, a big pat on the back, congratulate yourself, right. You, you're, you're in the 14 or excuse me, 30, uh, 13%, right. I forgot the number 87%. Yeah. 13% of you made it right. Which is pretty amazing. So the next piece of this is okay. Well, I want to, for, of course, if you're less than five years, be one of those people. And then if you've already made it past five, maybe it's time to even ramp it up a little bit more and, and get some more profit so we don't have to work so hard. So volume units versus profit. We've talked about that, why that's a problem. Uh, let's go into the, the challenge that I see for most agents is we don't know how to calculate our profit or profit margin. And my favorite word that I want you to get really familiar with today that I want you to, to put on a whiteboard, think about what is my profit margin percentage, right? What is my profit margin percentage? So I'm going to take you through some math. And I know some of you are already wanting to jump off because this is, I get it, it's math and I hate it as well, right? But I like simple math that makes me have a better life, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. So um, let's say that last year, you took your last 12 months. And if you've been in business 12 months or longer, just try to ballpark this, take out a piece of pen and paper and write down what did you make in total revenue? And in realtor words, GCI, gross commission income in the last 12 months. Okay. Now you can either do it for the last 12 months. You can do it for the last month. You can do it for the last quarter. We need to have a basis point to start with. Now, the next number you're going to have to understand is cost of sales. So cost of sales for an individual agent is defined by my split, right? So whatever your, your split is with your brokerage or real estate team that you're on, your royalty. So if you're paying a royalty to a brokerage or there's, uh, you know, sometimes brokerages have uh, transaction fees that they charge, all of these things. Those are called cost of sales. Um, and then referral fees. Oh, and referral fees are the, the killer murderer of profit. Now, you might be going, well, let's go. I love referrals, right? Referrals from other agents across the country. Those are good referrals. I'm not saying you don't want those referrals. We're talking about referral fees from Zillow Flex, from these other companies that tack on these fees because they're going, here, let me spoon feed you some leads you only have to give us 35% on the back end or relocation deals, right? I used to do a lot of Cardis relocation, 49% referral fee. Mm, that will eat up some of your wonderful profit very quickly. So that's cost of sales. Now, it's not always a negative, right? If your brokerage and your team provides a high value of, of things that help cover all this, then this is great. Your profit margin is going to work out really well because it's either they were going to do it or you were going to have to do it yourself one way or the other, right? That's the whole difference of what you have to look at. It's, am I getting the value that I need to make all of my numbers make sense? Okay. Then the next one, operating expenses. So operating expenses would be everything from your MLS fee to gas to, um, you know, any normal, your phone bill would be a normal operating expense. So you would need to figure out what that number is. Then after you subtract both of those, that's gonna leave you with how much you actually made in net profit, okay? So in net profit. 
Now, one of the questions I always get, Brendan, Brendan, what about taxes? Taxes are taken off of net profit. Okay, so you would take your taxes off after you got to the $100,000 number, as you see here. So 250 in revenue, 75 went to my cost of sales. Now, we'll show you what the ratio is, and we'll talk about different things as you build your business. If you own a real estate team, your cost of sales is going to include everything I just stated and how much you're paying your agents in their splits, right? So if they, you know, like us, we have a, an accelerated scale that goes from 50 to 90%, right? If they're, if they're getting a 90% split because they're just crushing it and they're all-stars, then you have a 90% cost of sale when they close a deal, right? So, so that's, that's how this looks. So if you're on a team, your team members would be, uh, their splits would, or their compensation would be a cost of sale. All right. So now here's how we find our profit margin. It's very simple. Once you have that profit number, you're going to divide it by your total revenue. And then you're going to get this beautiful number that you're going to want to fall in love with, which is profit margin percentage. So I had a hundred grand in revenue or excuse me, profit. I'm going to divide that by $250,000 in my revenue. And I'm going to know that I have a 40% profit margin. All right, I promise you that's the hardest part of the math we're going to really be taking you through today. So just, just breathe because I, I know it's annoying, um, but you're going to fall in love with this number. So this is the number where once you establish what it is, the only thing that any great business professional focuses on is how do I improve it, right? How can I improve it? For some businesses, if you're doing $10 million in gross commission income on a team, and you improve your profit margin by 1%, whoo, that's a big deal, right? That's a big, big deal. So I like to break this down into my favorite three little agents, right? We got the story of three little agents. And I'm going to start here with talking about our first agent. So Nelson Nocronk, he has no strategy, no system. He's like, yo, I'm just going to go sell my little heart out and see what happens. So he's at a 30% profit margin. He's buying leads. He's got, he's getting 20 grand a month of leads from realtor.com. He's spending all this crazy money. Uh, he's got a, a $1,500 Mercedes lease. He's got, I mean, this guy is just, but you see him on social media and you're like, Nelson's killing it. That guy is killing it. Nelson's making 75 grand off of $250,000 in GCI. Nelson's got no crunk. We got to help him here. I'm going to show you here in a second. Then you got Sally Sumcrunk, right? She's, she's like, cool, you know, I get it. I kind of look at my budget every once in a while. I think about things, you know, I try to only have Starbucks five times a day instead of seven, right? She's really just trying to sacrifice and pull those hard clutch, you know, you know savings together. So she's at a 40% profit margin right there. Look at that, $25,000 to your bottom line with 10% difference in profit margin. And then we've got Annie, our all-star, all cronk, right? She's at $250,000 in revenue, 50% profit margin, making 125 grand. So she's making 50,000 more than Nelson for selling the exact same amount of homes just because she focused on a number that she tuned in so she doesn't have to work harder. She gets to work smarter, right? So what we want to talk about today is how we're going to be all Annie, all cronks. Uh, and make progress towards doing that, all right? So to help Nelson, right, what we want to look at is from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, right, there's a, um, a strategy called the 30-30-40 uh, scoreboard. So if we took Nelson, and you can, you can get the copy of this, so info at brendanbardic.com, uh, we have this scoreboard, we're gonna, we also have the, the whole acronym for everything that we're going to show you here in a second. If you want any of these slides, just email us at info at brendanbardic.com. And what we're doing here is you're going to have this same scoreboard for yourself every single month. So our goal is to have 30% cost of sales, 30% of operating expenses, and 40% or more, that or more is, is the big one, in profit margin. So what you would do is you would put what you currently have, right? So let's say in this example, he has 70% cost of sales, 100,000 in operating expenses, and he's at 75,000 in profit. So he's off, he's a 30, 40, 30. 
So to fix this, all we have to think about is, okay, we now have to adjust the operating expenses to get them down 10%. So his profit margin increases by that 10%, right? So now he has to look at how am I going to do that? Where is that money going to come from and how do I get there? Okay. So hopefully there's no questions on this. Some of the questions I get is, well, is it always 30, 30, 40? Well, let's say you're a brand new agent and you, you're, you're like, you're, you have very little expenses. It's like, yo, I got gas and that's it, right? I just drive and then I make door knock a lot. I don't know, whatever you're doing. If you're looking at this and you go, oh, I'm just crushing it. This can also work against you in the other way. Maybe you're not spending enough in operating expenses to promote your business to get to where you need to be. So I always see these people like, man, I run clean. And I go, yeah, how many homes do you sell a, a year? Six. I go, cool. I go, I go, how hard are you work? And he's like, oh man, I'm making phone calls every day, hustling. I go, okay, well, off of each one of those sales, how much did you put back into your marketing budget or into building your business? Oh, nothing, man. No, I, I'm, I, gotta, I gotta save every dollar. Okay, well, it's gonna be hard to grow a business if we don't put back into it. So just as much, that's why the 30, 30, 40 is, is they've looked at it over tons of millionaire agents, tons of great agents. And they said, that's the right balance of where you want to be. So you might be spending too much. You could be spending too little, but you want to be around these numbers. And then of course, once you get it dialed in and you're cranking, you can always try to improve that profit margin percentage. All right. So let's talk about it. So Kronk is, it's not about making cuts or limitations. It's about intelligently restructuring your expenses. All right. And so that's what we're going to break into and that kind of take you through each one of these. So let's take a look at it. Let's start out with how to get set up to do this process. So number one, we need to set a calendar reminder for Kronk and review once a month for the same day at the same time to review. So for those that are using a calendar, please, I hope you are, right? You're just going to put an annual calendar reminder. And my recommendation is to do this one week after you receive your billing statement. So when you get your business credit card, or if you're, you're using your, AT, or your business checking card or whatever it is, first thing for all agents is all expenses have to be on one card. I see, I see agents pulling out cards like they're about to deal blackjack when they're standing for Starbucks. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll use this. Which one's going to work today? It's like, come on, like one card for all business expenses, period. End of story. Okay. So then you're going to print your most previous billing statement one, at, one week after the billing cycle, or go to your card company or bank and request to have it by mail. Think about it. The bank doesn't want to send these to you by mail anymore because it costs them money to mail it to you, number one. And number two, they go, well, I know I sent them an email that their bill is due. Let's see if they get too busy and forget to log in and actually check anything. And if it's not in your hand, you're not looking at that statement. You're just not, right? So go back and opt in to get your statements mailed to you. And I apologize. I understand eco-friendly people. I'm not trying to kill the forest. The money you save from this, dedicate and save some whales. You, you can save, you'll make so much money. You can go save with a rainforest or whatever you want. You need to get this billing statement in your hand. Okay. And then now we're going to go in and use the Kronk checkdown, K-R-O-N-C, to make sure that you're maximizing this. So You've got your billing statement in front of you. You've got the acronym K-R-O-N-C. And now we're gonna go down item by item on that statement and go, okay, starting with K, what do I absolutely have to keep for my business to grow, thrive, and, and for me to be, be successful, right? What do I absolutely have to have? So when we're looking at that K, this would be things like, paying for the MLS, right? You're probably going to need access as a real estate professional to the MLS. You just have to keep that. There's, there's not much else you can do, all right? So you're going to go down and put a K next to everything that you go, there's no way my business could survive without this, all right? 
The next one is, we're going to go back down the list again, and what can I replace? So the R is, what can be substituted for something more affordable? All right, so when I think about things that are more affordable, right, let's say that you're paying for um, uh, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop could be a good example. And you know it's $89 a month because you're a marketeer and you love marketing. Could you change that and maybe do Canva for 35 bucks a month? right? Canva Pro. Could there be some sort of, of way for that to, to make it more affordable for you, right? And then another place where I see a lot of opportunities to replace uh, expensive cost is direct mail, all right? So could you do every door direct mail, EDDM, and make your mailing cost a third of what it is, right? You can get it down to 19 cents a piece, Instead of sending a big eight by 11 flyer, could you save a little bit and cut it into a half or an eight or a, a five by seven, maybe for every other mailer? There's a lot of places to tweak these things as far as replace, uh, replacing with a more affordable option when you look at your budget. But you got to think about it, right? You just got to think about it, okay? Then the next one, we're going to go back down the list. And O, oh, and O oh is my favorite. I, oh my gosh, I should just say, oh my gosh, I love, oh, what can be implemented to counteract my expenses so I can offset them? So think about this, right? Like, uh, for us and our team, we do a big giveaway every month and we have amazing lender partner that, that works with us. And we go, look, can I, uh, you know, we're giving away a $500 Yeti cooler, Right? We have all these people call in. That's a whole nother, you can catch that on my YouTube uh, channel, Brendan Bardic Real Estate Coaching. But if you want to learn how to do giveaways, but if we're doing this big giveaway and we're going to have all these people call in, the Yeti cooler is 500 bucks. I can go to my, my lender partner or inspector or title, well, title insurance is a little funky, but you know, lender or inspector, generally the case, and go, hey, why don't you co sponsor this with me? You pay 250, I'll pay 250 for the cooler. I'll put your logo on all the marketing for it. And then if any leads come in, I'll give you access to them as well. So I just offset $250. Maybe they'll just pay for the whole thing. Or you could offset this cost of the giveaway. If you're, if you're featuring a giveaway for a local business spotlight, just ask the spotlight person that you're doing it with to donate the item that you're gonna use for your giveaway. You just offset a free giveaway they're getting promotion, right? Like, like maybe it's a, a, a new bakery and you know, they, they give away a birthday cake or something, right? Whatever it is, you don't have to pay for it, which is big, okay? The other way to offset in my favorite one, and we just did a, a very uh, a course that is on YouTube as well, is our broker transaction fee. So what we call a broker service fee. So in our organization, right, we have a $599 broker service fee that helps offset so many of my hard expenses, right? And on our team, we 50-50 we, we it with the agent. The agent gets $300 and we get $299. So the agent gets to offset their expenses, which is very important. And then we also get to offset some of ours. We provide service for that client for 25 years after the deal closes. It's a win-win, but I just brought another $5.99 to the bottom line, okay? So think about that. Think about what, what is on that list that could be offset on a regular basis. Um, and another big one is maybe leads, right? Partnering with someone to do leads or uh, creating a YouTube channel. So you're generating your own leads so you don't have to buy realtor.com leads or this or that or whatever it might be. Okay, what can you do? Maybe you go, instead of buying these leads this month, I'm just gonna suck it up and go door knock. Or maybe I'm going to go and do this or that to generate business, all right? So next one, negotiate. So I'm gonna go back through my list. I'm gonna put an in next to anything that I could renegotiate. So if I'm thinking about negotiating an expense, uh, maybe I'm paying for, uh, oh, perfect, great example is my cell phone. If you call your cell phone carrier right now, I guarantee you, you can negotiate a better rate. Some of you are still on your, your dad's family plan, right? From 1982, that's probably a good rate. You know, I don't know if you're gonna be able to beat that. That might be the one to stay on, I'm not sure. Uh, the other one that we found a big piece is, is your, your internet, even for your home or office. 
They're always willing to negotiate that. And when I say negotiate, all you have to do is threaten to leave. They'll negotiate with you real quick. Okay. So what could we renegotiate with uh, to make sure that we have this structured in the right way? And then lastly, what do we got to, what do we got to snip? What do we got to cut? Right? What, what, what's on there that I can live without? So a uh, perfect example, and I was thinking about this today because uh, I, 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 did, I, do this, I do this for the business and for my personal finances, right? And I'll just give you my funny personal one because it just will tell you who I am. So I, I had a big party and I felt real bad the next day. I drank a lot of Crown and ginger ales, wasn't feeling good. And of course, I get this perfectly timed ad for this company called Dose, D-O-S-E. And it's like, it's like to save my liver. It's like these shots that I'm supposed to take every day of like five hour energies to like make my liver okay. And I'm like, you know, I'm hung over and I'm like, oh my gosh, my liver's got to be shot. I need this. So I sign up $79 a month subscription. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to make me feel better. I'm going to be alive a lot better than, than I was. So I sign up $79 a month. I have now three cases of dose at my house. I've maybe taken two of them, right? And then I just forgot about it. And they just keep showing up. That's, that's, I mean, think about it. That's almost with taxes and everything. It's like a thousand dollars a year for my liver. And I'm not saying it's not important. It's important. I need my liver, but maybe there's things like that, that we could, you know, take off another one, right? You, you, your boyfriend dumped you, your girlfriend dumped you. And you're like, man, I gotta, I gotta check my horoscope. Sure enough. You sign up for this horoscope app and you know, you're, you're trying to figure out daily what your stars are telling you to align with. Maybe you could save nine bucks a month and not know what your horoscope is, right? Maybe you could make it. Maybe call your mom and be like, yo, can I share your Netflix login, right? Can I shave off some of these other ones? Your Disney Plus and your 50, you know, all these things. I'm telling you, there is so much fat to trim in there. It's just thinking about it. And what will really help you is it so you don't feel like you're losing just think about them laughing at you that they know you're a sucker and you're paying it every month. I had to flip it and go, I, I got more angry that I was, I was making other people rich because of my stupidity than I actually was upset about like the money, right? So whatever you got to do to make your mind work around this, but what could we possibly you know, cut through? So as we're looking at this, that's your acronym, right? You got your piggy bank, you got your crunk, so all we have to do now is run this play. And I'm going to give you a few more tips here to really bring this to life. Okay. So here's what it looks like on your billing statement, right? So just pretend this is your actual printed credit card statement. So you'd be going through and you go access to the MLS. I got to keep that. Got to be able to show houses. Got to, got to look those things up. Starbucks. Hmm, maybe I could replace that with making coffee at home three times a week. Maybe I could do it. Maybe I switch to, to green tea, right? Switch, switch to green tea and save yourself a fortune, all right? Maybe I could take my internet leads, $515 a month, and I launch a YouTube channel. So I'm producing leads myself, so I don't have to be dependent on someone else. We talked about the, the Yeti cooler, right? I can, I can negotiate that and call my lender and do a giveaway, and, and we can work that out. I guess you can use that one for offset or negotiate in both ways. And then that horoscope app, right? $9 a month, just cancel and delete it. You don't need it. So that's how it looks on your credit card statement as you're going through this in real stance. Now, how does this work? And what we, what we like to always talk about is cadence. So cadence means rhythm, right? And you see the military boots there. Cadence is left, right, oh, left, right, oh, left, right, right? It's a, it's a pace, it's a rhythm. And if we don't build this into our routine, it's probably not going to come to life. So number one, we have to set an annual goal for our profit margin percentage. So if you're brand new, simple, 40%, make sure that that's your goal. If you've been doing this and you know what your profit margin percentage is now, use that uh, chart that we showed you to either make the adjustments or just go, look, I'm gonna improve it 5%. If I could shave off 5% of my profit margin, or excuse me, shave off, if I could increase my profit margin by 5%, how much would I make at the end of the year overall? I guarantee you it's another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, $70,000, depending upon who you, who you are. 
And then the one that we know that kills it for everyone is if it's not visual at all times, it's not going to be top of mind. It's, it's going to go away. So I have, I have whiteboards here behind, behind my uh, monitor, right? Profit margin percentage is on there. I have to think about it all the time because I like to buy stuff. I love to buy stuff so much. It's so stupid. Everyone, again, on, my, on our team, it's like, we have parties coming up, client appreciation events. I'm like, can we get a, a guy to, to juggle flint, you know, fire? Like, I want everything because it's awesome and fun. Am I hurting the business, right? Am I hurting the business? Then the biggest one, if there's no reward for doing this, it's not very fun. So what's gonna be that reward for you when you hit your profit margin percentage? Now think about this, you could do this for your business or for your personal, right? Both, and I know as realtors, we kind of mix some of those together most of the time. Right? If you're still mixing them together, you got to start there and separate those two, right? Because you have personal expenses and business expenses. But think about doing this with your personal expenses. And then what's the reward, right? Am I taking the kids to Legoland when I increase that profit margin by 5%? Am I going to take that money and invest it into a virtual assistant? And that's my reward. So I never have to type up my own contract ever again. Think about that. So set the reward, make sure that you have clarity on it, all right? So my, my great friend and uh, real estate coach, Jordan Freed, he said, after working with hundreds of coaching clients, and I think he has over 10,000 hours of, of working with clients, the question was never about cutting expenses. It was always about maximizing profit. And I just think we, we, need, to, we need to fall in love with that word, maximizing profit. So now you know what it is. How do we put this into live action? How do we make this work? So we talked about it. Establish your current profit margin. We've got a time block, the monthly Kronk review. Go to your credit card company. So I'm saying what to do right now. Like right now when we leave this session, go to your Capital One or your American Express or your Wells Fargo or whatever it is you're using. Opt in for mailed um, statements or print your statement right then or both, okay? Then go through this cronk at least once. First of all, you're going to be amazed by what you see. Shoot me an email or text and say, Brennan, I couldn't believe it. I saved like $190 a month. Thank you. Right. Which is, which is going to, you know, be a nice $2,400 at the end of the year, straight to your bottom line. Um, you have to create an action plan. If you do this, but you don't actually go and do the items, don't let that budget leave your desk, or excuse me, that billing statement leave your desk until all of those things have been accomplished. And then as we said, establish that reward when you succeed. What is going to be that, that awesome thing at the end of the rainbow that you get for hitting your actual score there? So, so in closing, as I've said before, all we're trying to do is work smarter, not harder, that way we can enjoy our life more, enjoy our families, donate more to the charities that we care about, but it all starts with awareness and a strategy. So thank you. I'll stick around for a few minutes here, answer any questions that you might have. Um, and I hope you have great success with it. So what, what questions do we have? In regards to just creating a discipline around the practice, I know that's mentally mostly the effort that you have to put forth, but do you have any tips or insight on how to create that and stick with it? Yeah, so Courtney, yeah. So, I mean, the biggest tip, but by all means that I can say is what I, what I see with agents, we, our whole universe is defined by visual scoreboards. Everything has to be visual. So again, you know, again, if you could see around, my, my vision board is here. Every goal for every one of my companies is here. My profit margin percentage is on here. My uh, average GCI percentage is on all my whiteboards, right? So another thing you want to think about is what's my average gross commission income? How much do I make per, per home sale? Maybe you're at 2.4% and you want to put that to 2.8%. It's got to stay in front of you all the time. So yeah, visual, visual, visual. What else? 
yeah, budget classes are usually not a lot of questions because it's just so so riveting, right? Um, that it's it's tough. But is this is this possible to do? Right. So so me and my director of ops, Meg, have been doing this now for gosh, probably a year and a half, maybe two years. And it's helped us make a lot of intelligent decisions to, to improve uh, our overall company. And it gave us more money. Uh, like I said, it's not about cutting it. We, we saved a lot of money on stupid things that we put back into better things. That's, that's where I get excited, right? It's like, I'm not as much as excited about cutting, which is also great, but I'm about, is that dumb and is that better? And how can I make that, that work, right? Um, so Brendan, question. So I have not made a dollar from my real estate business yet. So obviously I'm working on that. Um, so I just want to make sure that, um, that I can apply this when I do make a dollar. Um, is the, the net, I'm sorry, the profit margin, is that the net or the gross? Because I know you talked about taxes. So I just want to be clear, like. So, that's I... so, so profit margin percentage is going to be whatever you made after expenses and cost of sales. So let's say you made $100,000 in a year in GCI and you mm -hmm. had $50,000 in, uh, we'll make it, yeah, $50,000 in expenses and cost of sales, then you made a profit of $50,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. You then take that $50,000, divide it by how much you made, $100,000, that's an easy number in this one, your profit margin percentage is 50%. Got it. And, for, and for what Tanil said in this situation, if you haven't made money yet, go do this with your personal budget first, right? Get, get, let's get our personal right, because there's a lot of fat in there, I can tell you. I, I, again, I've got, I've got every streaming service probably on earth, but I've got one from each one of my wife's family members now. So I still got them all. I'm just not paying for it because I am addicted to television. I'll be flat on this, right? I don't sleep very much. And so I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm replacing it. I'm not cutting it. Right. So we laugh, but I, but I wanted you to really think about this and it sucks, right? You're going to look at stuff and you're just going to go, right. Like Blake's going to, you know, his Tinder app or whatever. He's going to be like, man, can I live without this? I, I don't know. Right. I don't know if I can live without, just got, just got to play with them. You already cut it. Yeah. I, or replace it with, I don't know anyway, but yeah, there's things that we can do. That, that'll make this better. So, so if there's anything we can help with, of course, email us, call us. As I said, let us know if there's anything we can do. Try it once with both personal and business. Shoot me an email, shoot me a message, and just let me know what you saved. All right, everyone. All right. Have a great day. Have great success. Call me if you need anything. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.